what's up everyone today we have a pressure washer it's a Excel HR2600 has a Honda 5 horsepower on there one wheel is completely flat I think the tube is bad and in addition to that the owner says it's no longer making power so I'm going to take off this cover and we'll see what's going on. There's just one screw here and another one on the other side. You just know it's going to be a rough day when in order to even take the cover off you have to get an adjustable out. So I'm going to turn you off and put you in a safe place. I totally understand why this needs a cover. Because if I remember correctly, this type of pump has like these two sets of arms that go back and forth. Anyway. Oh, it's in there. Duh. So, like I said, I totally understand the reason why. But why does the cover have to be so annoying to take off? Do this again. Okay, maybe now it can come off. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. These will move. Which, to be honest, seems weird why they're not moving. But, the owner just said to replace the pump, so that's what I'm going to do. The reason why we're even taking it off to look is because I don't know what type of shaft this is. So we're going to find that out. Here's a tip. When you're doing this, take off the bottom ones first. That way, if you take off the top ones, the bottom ones, the pump will be kind of at an angle and be putting a whole lot of stress on them. It's going to make it a whole lot harder to take off. So hopefully this isn't a short shaft. Oh, we can take this off too. <sighs> okay. Oh boy. It is. That's not good. The reason why that's not good is because it's going to make everything substantially more ex expensive. Obviously this is not the same one, but this is a normal length for a shaft. The other one is maybe half that, so you have to get a very special pump for that type of shaft size. After researching the pump and putting everything together for the pump, I found uh, one that actually isn't all that bad. It should be here later today. Fingers crossed. Here's a question for you. You know, I'm not going to say like the Postal Service is the most reliable entity in the world, but they do usually come pretty much every day the same time of day. And granted, Amazon's not one of those. But I asked the guy, I can buy one higher quality, but it's going to be more expensive. Or I can buy one off Amazon, it will fit probably have a warranty it's gonna be like 30 days and he said you know what that's fine 65 bucks I pay for that and the labor to install I'm okay with that I don't use this that much buy that one okay we will do having said that yesterday I got a package at 10 30 in the morning and the day before that mind you I ordered these two separate things 
on the same day. Um, I didn't get my package until about 9.30 at night. Or maybe 8.30. I forget. It was around the time it's getting dark. So, whatever time that was. There's like no consistency. I don't know. I, it's probably just complaining, but... Let's continue. I'm under no illusion that I'm going to get lucky and this is going to start, but I at least want to see if it will. Um, choke. That's fuel. has oil. It's not very good oil, but it's oil. So, this is a fairly common problem. I'm going to take the carb off. It's pretty simple. Take off the cover, take off the 10 millimeters, unconnect it, and there we go. I'm going to take the carb over to the carb station and we'll open it up. So, taking off the carb, I do kind of want to point something out. <laughs> what? Who puts these on an the air filter? Well, I guess it could be for the whole machine. Yeah, it's probably for the whole machine. What a weird idea. I've never seen that before. Okay, anyway. These do not take the carb out. These are just little bushings or buffers for, you know, the reduction of shaking and everything for the tank. Now, if you need to take the tank off, you definitely need to take that off. I think there's also one or two on the bottom. There's one. Um... But to take the carb off, it's actually these. Cover your ears. And from here, you just have a whole lot of funkery going to happen. Putting this back together is like putting a house of cards back together. It's, I mean, it's not impossible. The more you do it, the faster you get. But the first time, it's not going to be easy, but you can't do it. I mean, look at this. A few line going up, you take that off. This is all dangling now. This, I have seen better days. Look at that. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to take all that nonsense off. So I'm kind of letting the fuel drain. It's going to get a little dirt in there. That's fine because it's coming off the top. But it was a clean cup. So I'm thinking we're going to find two things. One, water settles on the bottom. When water settles. The water surface tension won't allow it to go through such a small opening. So you're never going to get rid of the water going through the jet. You're just going to starve the jet. Um... That's one reason this can happen. So when pulling the choke on, you kind of have a little bit more suction. And you're able to pull a little bit of fuel up. Just enough for it to run. Or the jets are clogged. And they're clogged to the point where it needs that extra suction to even get any type of fuel. So we're going to see if there's water or if it's just gunk. I'm kind of leaning towards gunk.
don't really see any water. We'll let that rest on the angle a little bit. It's easier to tell. Turn that on. Because you could just blow through it with the compressed air and whatnot, but we're already here. Why not just do it? You know what? I changed my mind. This changed my mind. See that little dark area where all the sludge is starting to go to? That is water. So, probably don't have a plugage. Just have a waterage. Let me explain another reason why I don't really want to. So when they build these, they do put a coating on there. It's supposed to prevent corrosion. Now, cleaning it, you can remove some, or even all, of that protection. And if it's dirty and super corroded... Oh, that's weird. It actually came out. Huh. Anyway, you can remove almost all or even all of it, and then it will make it a whole lot easier for it to get nasty again, basically. Not that I'm not saying cleaning it isn't a good idea. Because it is. But um, for the longevity of it, I like to avoid it if I don't have to do it. So I'm going to go turn on my air compressor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to blow through the jet. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to blow all the dust off first. And then blow through that. Uh, in fact, I might just take off this adjustment too. I'll show you that when I put it back on. I'm just going to take a Dremel tool. I'm just going to cut it through here. This will, pro uh, will not create any sparks, so you should be okay. But if you were to nick anywhere else, that creates sparks. So just to be on the safe side, I am. So again, dunk it in water and kind of wash it out with hot water. And then when I take my air compressor, dry it out thoroughly, then clip this off. This is what I'm talking about. Now with that out, we can completely remove this adjustment needle. First, we have half, one, one half, one half turns out probably keep it around that. Maybe do two. Cause the adjustment for that is little to nothing. Yep. So half of this. Hopefully the tube will be here too. That is also part of the package coming today. I ordered everything at the same time and it should be coming at the same time. I'm going to shove a little wire down there though because that does look a little suspect after I blow it out. Unless I can see directly down through there then it should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and do that avoid the noise for you. For good measure I just blew out everything, but it all looked fine. So where did that screwdriver go? Uh -huh.
Very, very, very few Hondas actually have jets that screw in all the way from the bottom. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Usually, they do not, which can cause not an issue, but it's just sometimes they can be a little troublesome to take out. that bowl. Underneath the other screwdriver. So usually the jet to drain is going to be the opposite end of the fuel. So we're going to continue with that trend. Very few times will be that that drain is actually going to fix the problem, but in this case it probably would have. But it still is good that we took it out, and especially since we need to clean out this passageway, it was definitely a little torqued in there. The wire wasn't quite cutting it, so I ended up having to take a little micro drill bit. And cleaning it that way. Okay, I'm just going to install it the same way it came off, and we will give this a try. This uh, type of carb has a pump that goes um, off the crankcase pressure. This is the pump. So if you are pulling on it and it's not doing anything even though you cleaned it make sure this is connected in addition it's not going to start immediately because the bowl's dry the fuel's underneath the tank um excuse me underneath the the carb uh the fuel was a little dirty i took it out put fresh stuff in there i didn't see any water in there but who knows i blew it out put new fuel in we should be ready. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's give it a try. Like I said, it's going to take a few pulls. Oh, forgot the choke. Okay, now I put the choke lever, or uh, choke, uh, I don't know, pull on. And I realized I for also forgot the adjustment needle for the pilot. Now that both of those are on, let's give it a pull. Just when you try to do something, a bee lands on the exhaust. That's a honeybee too, I don't want to hurt it. Well, it's gone now. Mostly. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to see a whole lot of this. It's too bright in here, and don't want to put you on the table and break the camera. But I did it again. Um, what a cool off. I had to go take care of a 
quick iron, and then came back, pulled on it, started right up, just like before. So I'm thinking, um, either, I mean, the tank should be fine, unless there is a little bit of water left over in the fuel pump, which I even drained it out anyway. So, and if it happens again, I'll drain it one more time. But when I drained it, that's what came out. I mean, there's no water in there. I mean, a little old fuel, probably from the fuel that was still in the pump. But that's it. Um, thinking spark. So it might be cooled off enough. Not sure. But let's. I put a spark checker on there. So right as it started to sputter, the spark became very erratic. I think we have a bad coil. Um, just to make sure, I'm going to try a new plug. <laughs> Okay. Very odd. Let's take you over here. So this is a spark checker. This is the boot. That just goes in the boot. Don't touch that when you're it's running at least. And then that just goes over your plug. This is a new NGK plug. And what you saw was the last 10-15 seconds of three or four minutes running straight with no problem. Um, when I was looking at it, the little light and the checker um, flickered when it started to die off. That very well could have been the engine RPMs changing so drastically. Um, usually if there's a dead spark, it will completely stop, which eventually it did, don't get me wrong, but that, that's probably just because the engine stopped too. So, I'm really glad I checked the spark plug instead of the the coil. Because coils don't usually go bad, at least not very often. I'm pretty confident on my deduction on that one. Now that the engine works, I saved you the aggravation of watching me break free the set on this, but I think it's time that we pay a little attention to the, the wheel here. There we go. Now this is on a block. It's not very tall. Okay. Now when you find a tube, basically you look for these numbers right here. This is a, for instance, 4.10 to 3.504. 
type that in, you'll find yourself a tube. Luckily, I did that, and now I have one. So it's time to take this apart. Now, I am not a tire person. Never have been, never will be. So, I'm sure there's probably an easier way of doing this. I just don't do it. I may get a second one of these. But for me, just pop it off. It doesn't help that these are super just old. Now we need to try to get the tube out. It has just enough air in it to be a difficult problem. But once we can get a grip over it, it shouldn't be too hard. It shouldn't be. Famous last words. Oh, you almost took a tumble. And of course, a bee's buzzing me at the same time. Thank you, Spring. There we go. See, once you just get it started, it's not too bad, but that first step, it's a doozy. <sighs> now, the fun part is trying to get the stem, the new one in there. Now this, I am going to blow up just a little bit of air, just to make it a little easier. So I'm going to go do that and be right back. Took the whole thing out, because it was just not going to work out any way. So now, I'm just going to put the, the tube inside the tire, and we'll put the rim back on. Now that it's in there, I do want a little air now. Oh, I need to put the stem back in. I took the stem out. This is a stem removal and installation tool. You just, it just kind of screws the stem in and out. You usually don't have to take it out, but I decided to take it out on this time just because I put a little too much air in there. And if I need to, if I took too much out, it would just be even more difficult. So I'd rather just have it open. You don't want to fill it, you just want it to have enough to have a decent shape. Now, I'm going to struggle in getting this back in there, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, all here. Oh, 
Uh, there we go. Final step. Just put the cap on. We should be good. Now, good news is we're basically done except for um, the oil change, which I might do right now just because it's the last thing I need to do, and the pump installation. Bad news is the pump is coming via UPS and it's been on a truck for the last two days, so who knows when that's going to be arriving. Now that we have the pump finally, I need to get a key. I think the key was stuck in the pump for the old one. I don't have it anymore. But that's okay. I have that one. So now, I need to make sure that all lines up. And unfortunately, it's not. So with the switch off, it's going to be easier to rotate the shaft than is the actual pump. The pump is set to something around there. You know what? I'm going to make this easy on us. Uh, horizontal pumps don't really suffer from this too much, but vertical do. Um, but I like to put anti-seize on it. That way if it does get a little rusty in there, it doesn't really seize up. Do they do that in the factory? No. But if you've ever taken off a pump that's seized on there, you will understand that this, I don't know, how long that take? 12 seconds? can save you a lot of time later. So I'm just going to go around, put all these screws in, and then it um, should be set. You know what, while I do this I'm just going to explain a couple things I can't remember because it's literally been like almost a week and a half since I ordered this pump. But um, this is a short shaft. You can't just put a normal pump on there the shaft isn't long enough. I know, insert joke here. But the problem, besides my ratchet being too big, I have to get a wrench. I don't want to say these are not as plentiful as others. But, you, you know, it is going to be a little harder to find this. This is a lot different than the old style. But if you get it on Amazon, just type in Excel pressure washer pump. Verify it's the right shaft size. Try to get something that's close to what you had before. And, um... And you should be set. Because if you don't, you know, if you just get a normal one, um, it just won't fit. You'd either have to change the whole crank, which can be done, don't get me wrong. It's just, that's expensive. The cost of finding another crank, assuming you don't have one off of a different engine. It's going to be a whole lot more than just paying a little extra for this pump. So I want to say this is like, I don't know, maybe $10 more than a standard pump. So nothing, nothing elaborate. But, yeah, so here we go. We should be sent, I'm going to run this outside a little bit um, with the water on, get the oil warmed up change the oil. We have everything else done. 
this pump should be fine, but just in case, you know, I do want to double check it. When you do install it, though, it doesn't really matter what end this goes off, but look at your cart and look at your exhaust. If you have the hose on this side, you know, what's also on that side? The exhaust. And if you've ever been pressure washing and all of a sudden completely just forgot to look around and notice that your hose touched your exhaust, it, it can burn a hole in it pretty fast. So I like to keep it on this end for both um, in and outlets. So that way we can make sure that nothing gets burned, or at least not very easily. So we wrap it up here. Um, you know, we should be set to go. We have a new tire, or excuse me, new rim. No, not rim. New tube. Um, got the engine running. Found out the spark plug was bad. Odd. Um, carb is cleaned out. Fuel tank is emptied out of water, so there's just fuel in there now. And a new pump. So this should be a nice little project for someone who just, you know, got this for cheap. And let's have a good pressure washer after the end of it. Okay. Well, I'm going to... See, see everyone later. Definitely put a thumbs up. That helps me. Definitely subscribe. That also helps me. I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good night.